Daniel 2.1 In the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, he dreamed dreams. It was defined as a frightful image that was bonded to him. The word wherewith in Hebrew actually says, that thing was a spirit of a violent storm. It was agitated and caused him to die and it became his existence. This was a nightmare to the king that a beast would become his existence. This thing the king called him was very real and this bond would begin to open up good ground alongside him. The definition is to interpret truth that had not yet been known. Notice this beast was and is not and yet is similar to a dream and the first things that is approached is the corruption of the church. In our time, the writings of a little black book. In verse 2, he commands magicians defined as engravers. These are false writings that leave a mark of servitude. Then the astrologer. The Hebrew describes this as ones that speak with a lisp. False prophets they are. These men do not speak right before God. Finally, sorcerers are workers of strong delusion, performed by power behind the curtain. These obstructions of our time, the behemoth has removed, of Isaiah 27.1. Listen to this closely. In that day the Lord with his sword, being the agitated storm, behemoth, in the great strength of his sword, a decipher would remove the piercing engraver and the crooked slanderer of Leviathan and slay the dragon that is in the sea. This was Cephas, the power behind the curtain. These three creations of the potter's hand were tools for the blind. Those that insist they feel their ways around truth. In other words, in verses 4 and 5 of Daniel 2, they say, reveal this bond of a troubled spirit you have and we will open up as to its truth. The king answers to these obstructions, I cannot, the thing is gone from me. And if you cannot open up without this presence, you shall be cut, defined as tilled by the blade of the plow, and in pieces, meaning stomped into the ground. I would add, this is the ox. And your house is defiled, will be plowed down as dunghill, and this is the purpose of the beast. It is the prophetic life of the king's exposing of truth in the latter days. In verse 6, he offers them rewards as the alternative to violence. If you open up, he says, or interpret this presence, you shall receive of me gifts and rewards of great honor. You know, but as all occupants of a bed of lies, most won't get this. With eyes closed in verse 7, they respond, Show us and we will tell you of its truth. Notice the parallel in Revelations 2, 24 through 26. Similar words from the destroyer. But you and Thyatira, I would add a bed of lies. As many as have not this doctrine, called the little black book. And we were not made aware of the abyss, they say, or the depths of Satan, as they speak of. You will be no further burdened. Hold fast till I come. Stay on course to the end, and I will reward you with power over the nations. You see, open up and receive great gifts of honor. But these tools for the blind are not buying this. And Nebuchadnezzar notices in verses 8 and 9. He says, I'm certain we could have saved time if the beast were present. But because you say, until you see, the thing is gone from me. And for you three there is but one decree. You are prepared liars, corrupt, as you stand before me. Until the time be changed. Again, the king is approaching prophecy here. Time is a menstrual period 
of a woman, as blood in the water. It is referenced as a period by change of removal. This change came and went in Revelations 8:8. 8, 8. As the altered beast, this fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood in the water. These men, priests of Thyatira, of Nebuchadnezzar's time, stored up and are now no longer present. They believed the lie and the testifier was too much. The truth is, the representatives say in Daniel 2, 10 through 11, there is not a man on earth that can show the king's matter of any level of authority. And it is a rare thing the king requires and no one else will show this. So look close at the work of a drunkard engraver. It reads, except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. Does this make any sense? The proper keys of Hebrew say, without exception, the Almighty's power does not dwell with a man of the flesh. This was their opinion. And wow, they were wrong. Isaiah 28, 5, after speaking of these three Leviathan collective, he says, let him take hold of my strength. And so the king engages this in Daniel 2.12. For this cause the king was angry, and this enters the key into the ignition, and became furious. This is the agitated whirlwind entering the room as the beast. And he is decreed by the king, destroy all wisdom of Babylon. beginning with these three. And here we go again. This is food that I provided to my family for years. I want to now share it with you. If you like it, I'll provide more. Thank you for listening and God bless you.